from the human side of this, from the human side of this, how, how frustrating has this been for you? Do you don't go two full seasons without really getting your shot to show what you can do? Uh, it's it's been you know ups and downs for sure. Uh, last year I got to be on the field, so that helped a lot. Um, at the same time, I was still learning throughout the whole year. Um, this year, obviously, physically from a physical standpoint, uh, it was frustrating early on, um, but. I mean, I got great people around me. Uh, guys like Elijah Mitchell uh, was the big one for me this year, uh, just because he was rehabbing his MCL, you know, twice. Um, so spending some time with him in the training room um, and just like, man, watching these guys play, watching these guys locked in in meetings, watching these guys, you know, just on the practice field from afar. I um, mean, it's just inspired me the whole the whole year. Uh, so it wasn't hard for me to, you know, keep going or anything like that. I see it as, you know, this is, this is my only option. Uh, so. It was never really hard, I guess, mentally from that standpoint, as you know, people would think. Um, but I just got such great people around me, great people in this organization. Uh, so I really didn't feel like I had anything to worry about. What if between been... the Lions, what impressed you most about Brock and how he stepped in? I mean, he, how, just how he handled himself. Uh, I mean, we can talk about throws all day. He can make every throw uh, in the world, and, and he showed that throughout the year. But just how he handled himself, you know, the way he inserted himself in the offense, um, the way he was, you know, treating other people, really. Uh, I mean, he treated guys from guys first day in the building on practice squad the same as you know nick bosa um so i think that says a lot about him as a person did, did you chalk, chalk all these quarterback injuries up this season to just bad luck i i mean i, I personally don't believe in luck you know every, I, I truly believe everything happens for a reason i think that's that's what helped me throughout this year um and even right now uh, i believe that everything happens for a reason uh, i might not know the reason ever i might not know the reason until next year uh, but whatever happened this year, whatever happened to me, you know, Jimmy, Brock, Josh, you know, which is crazy to say. Um, but yeah, I, I truly believe that everything happens for a reason and that we're all going to be better from it. This has been such a tight locker room. What are the emotions of just knowing that with contracts and everything else that goes on in the NFL offseason, the locker room won't look exactly the same next year? Yeah, I mean, it's hard every year. Uh, this year, I feel like I have a better idea and, and understanding that it won't be the same. Um, but going into last year, obviously, I didn't know what to expect from a coaching staff standpoint, from from player standpoint. Uh, I mean, it, it definitely, the hardest part for me is, you know, the guys you get real close with. I mean, I got these two guys right next to me in my locker that I don't know, you know, what's going to happen with them. Uh, but, man, nothing, obviously, more I want than, than to have those guys back right next to me in the locker room next year. Uh, but I understand, you know, it's a business, and that's just kind of how things go. Trey, I'm sure you're aware of some of this. I mean, some of this is out of your control, breaking your ankle, whatever. But I'm sure you're well aware of some of the talk, like 49ers made a mistake. Why did, you know, Trey Lance is not the answer, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I don't know. How does that make you feel, and you know, what does it do to you as a competitor? I mean, yeah, I'm excited to, to go out and, and show what I can do. Uh, same same situation that it's been for me the last two years uh, and really my whole life. Uh, nothing, nothing has really changed and still have the, the same mindset. I don't read your guys' articles, unfortunately for you guys. Sorry. Um, but and I know people do. And that's just part of it. That's part of this job. That's part of the business. Uh, but if I'm worried about that stuff, you know, I've said it a million times. I just worry about what these guys think in this locker room, uh, what the coaches think, what people in this organization think, anything outside of that. Uh, it's totally out of my control. So I don't know why I'd let that have any impact on me. Right. Cool. Thanks, Appreciate you guys. Any, any things on the table, including Tommy John, or what's your understanding? Yeah, there's, you know, different options in terms of, you know, letting it recover, um, surgery, um, all these different types of surgeries, repair versus reconstruction. Um, so we still haven't you know, come to a conclusion about any of that. So um, still have to go get a couple more pictures on on the MRIs and whatnot, and uh, and get some more opinions, but working with our me medical team now and, and we're still trying to come to a conclusion on what I have are to you, do. What are you in pain right now? Yeah, it's good. Um, in terms of walking around and stuff, I don't feel as much. It's, it's swollen, um, but the minute I go to move or you know pick something up or whatever, there's definitely pain. I, I just can't use my arm um, for any other purposes than that. Um, so definitely uh, it sucks like it. I, I definitely, you know, injured it. So. How much of Sunday was the adrenaline allowing you to even be out there? Yeah, I think obviously it played a big part in that. Um, you know, right when it happened, obviously my arm just like went numb and um, I knew something was wrong. I didn't know exactly why. I didn't know if it was like, you know, just a shot that I had taken um, just from the physical side of the thing of football. And all right, just let it you know wear off and then I'll be fine. But then it just kept going. And the minute I tried throwing, Literally, like, I, I knew something was wrong. I couldn't throw. And so, um, yeah, obviously the adrenaline and stuff, I think, helped in terms of allowing me to go back in the game and hand the ball off. 
even that was, you know, pretty painful. But um, just overall, you know, it just sucked that I wasn't able to throw. Okay. At your last uh, press conference Friday, you talked about how how hard you leaned on faith and family and not getting carried away and not getting too high and low. And is that all that being put to the test now? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, with whatever I'm about to, you know, face um, in terms of, you know, coming back through injury and what people are going to say and all that kind of stuff, that's definitely a test to, you know, what I believe in and what my family believes in as well. So, um, you know, nothing changes in terms of what I believe or who I am. And um, I feel like it'll, it'll just be a good test to, Know what I say and what I claim, you know. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be good, and I'm I'm excited for the for the journey and the road ahead. Whatever is to come, I'm just gonna keep my head down and grind away, and um, know that God's got a plan for all of this. Everyone was kind of in shock right after the game, but with 24 or 48 hours to process it, how do you feel about the game and just the how it how the season ended? Yeah, it's still the same, really, just in terms of. Um, just the sadness and, and the frustration of man, like that's how we went out kind of mentality. Um, you know, it just sucks because of how good of a team that we have and not really being able to showcase everything that we had in, in terms of the offensive game. Um, you know, it, it just it sucks. I'm sad for the guys um, because of all the work and, and the games and uh, the moments that we've had leading up to that moment or up, up into that game, and then to go out like that, it just it sucks. And it's a shame for all the guys that have been here for a while, um, and even the guys that just got here. So it is what it is. We're going to learn from it and, and get stronger and, and be ready for next year. How do you guys take the time to process that sort of grief and experience of the season not ending the way you want it to versus putting it aside and starting the grind? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's definitely got to be some time to reflect and understand what we went through, why we went through it. Um, how can we be better and things like that? But, you know, also like the next challenge ahead of, all right, what can we do to, to win for next year and finish the whole thing and do it the right way? Um, and I feel like we did do that this year. Like we got to learn from this year and, and we did so many great things this year. And it's just at the end, some things didn't line up. Um, and I think some things were just out of our control um, that we have to live with sadly. But um, man, we can, we can look at this year and be like, you know, we, we understand what it looks like and what it takes to, to go and, and to get on a streak and get hot and, and to win big games. So we'll definitely learn from it, but you know, there's a lot in front of us in terms of you know, grinding and, and, and getting better. Okay. What kind of case do you think you made to be this team starter? Can you say that again? What, what kind of case do you think you made this year to be this team starter going into this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, I just wanted to, to win at all costs. Right when the team needed me um, that week against Miami, um, obviously. For all the games that I played in and stuff, I, I, that was still my mindset was just to win and it let everything else fall into place. So for me to claim or say anything in terms of what's going to happen moving forward, that's out of my control. Um, I'm going to do what I can to get back healthy and be ready to compete come fall. And, um, you know, just be ready for whatever coach asked me from then. Bro, moving forward. After the game, Fred Warner talked about, about how you didn't need to be sad for what you did. You're the reason that they got there. What can you say about the support of the locker room? Yeah. Um, I just, I, I love these guys. I appreciate them, um, just their leadership. And, and they've been through this, you know, year after year after year. And um, for them to, you know, have respect for, you know, what I've done and, and the way I've handled my stuff, like I appreciate that about them. And I've learned so much from them. Uh, you know, George has taken me in and, and Fred and Eric, like all those guys have just shown me what it looks like to be a pro. And um, I appreciate them for that. They've got my back and, you know, you can do all this talking and stuff, but it comes down to going out in the field and, and doing your thing and producing for the team and for the guys. And so um, for them to have respect for what I've done, like I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. So it doesn't get any better than this locker room right here. Brock, have you and Kyle had any early conversations about next year? Can you say it again? Have you and Kyle had any early conversations about next season? We just sort of reflected about the, the season um, yesterday. Um, and it was really more about what I can do to, to get healthy and, and uh, what I have to do you know, when I get back and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of who's going to be the starter and who we're bringing in or any moves or anything like that, literally, like we didn't we didn't cover any of that. And honestly, I didn't want to hear about any anything. Um, I just wanted to focus on my uh, my recovery right now and what I have to do for my arm moving forward. And, and that was that. So hey Brock, you look into like other key studies from like these last two days, Brock, like other guys that may have gone through what you did, what you have ahead of you. Yeah, um, it's just it's a unique situation just because 
it's really like a baseball injury. You know, with a lot of baseball pitchers, they face this kind of thing with the UCL. Um, you know, guys that have this problem in football, you know, really the quarterback situation, there hasn't been a lot of cases with it, but, you know, usually it's like a linebacker or offensive lineman, and then they can just brace it up and go play. But when you're throwing, um, it's a different situation. But, you know, the way a quarterback throws compared to a pitcher, two different things. Um, you know, it's similar, but more violent as a baseball player. So, you know, they're saying, you know, the recovery process could be a little bit faster as a quarterback, but um, definitely I've looked at guys that have, have gone through this kind of thing, and it's uh, I'm just trying to find what's right because everyone's situation is a little different, and I'm trying to find out which one's right for, for myself. Yeah. Brock, I know there's we'll tell you one more, guys. As you mentioned, uncertainty in guesswork, but a reported timeline out there for you is, is six months. Is it your understanding if that you know, proves to be accurate, that would be six months you're ready to, for full, full football activities, or is that six months like you can start throwing a football? Or? Well, I think I've heard multiple things. Um, I think in that scenario, that would be six months you're ready to go. I mean, I think in that scenario they said um, after three months you can start throwing and get, getting into a throwing program and get into a routine. Um, I think six months would be like when you're allowed to just go and practice and be a part of everything. Um, but that, that's, that's a scenario, but I definitely have some other options too. So definitely going to you know, go through these MRI scans and make a decision hopefully soon. Does that provide some optimism? I mean, if indeed that proves true? Um, if that is the case, yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what the case is going to be yet, the final, you know, uh, decision. But um, if that is it, then so be it. You know, I'll, I'll be ready come camp. And honestly, what matters to me most is being able to play for the season, you know. So um, if that's the case, then yeah, so be it. But we'll see. I still have some options to, to weigh and, and make a final decision soon. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's always good. Like it sucks, but also it's good to take some time. So, really, take about three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Get your mind off everything and get back to work. Uh, just the really like the thing that I enjoyed it really was like the brotherhood and just like you know everybody in the room is always willing to go to work. So that's that's one thing I really enjoy. Like I say, uh, we had a good team last year, but uh, this year was the year. Like what made it so special was just like the the effort everybody gives on and off the field. Like you, you can see everybody, even on off days, everybody's in the building trying to get their body right and stuff. So man, it, it was amazing. Really, just our team we had, just knowing like the opportunity we have to play in the play in the championship and. Hopefully the Super Bowl, so that just gave me confidence. Like, man, I gotta help and get back so I can be on my team. Uh, I have to say, uh, really, just seeing more uh, slowing the game down. That's I have to say from my rookie year to this year, the game is very slower to me. So that's what really helps me out. If you get three of the same numbers, no matter what number it is, it's not uh, like I say, we always have trust in Kyle and them and John and everybody else. Like they always do a good job of bringing guys in that cares about not just themselves but everybody. So it, it's exciting. No, that's so, not. That's not. We had well, uh, you know, with, with you had a snap to a few different quarterbacks this yeah. season. So what was just that whole surreal scene like as the year went on with different quarterbacks and how how the offense handled it? I mean, honestly, it, it, it couldn't have been handled better, I feel like. You know, it's obviously not something you go into the season wanting to happen. But, um, you know, I think the whole offensive staff did a great job of preparing those guys in the quarterback room to be ready when they were, when they were called upon. So, um, you know, starting, starting with Trey, then going to Jimmy, then going to Brock, then going to Josh. I mean, it's pretty wild. Then, then, then back to Brock, I guess. But it's pretty wild to look back and see just the performance that came out of the offense, regardless of the, you know, the uh, the circumstances. Did, this was your first big shot to prove that you're a starter in this league. Mm -hmm. did, did you surprise yourself in any way? Did, how how did you improve as the season went on? You know, I think it's it's just really tough to get the opportunity to start if you're an undrafted guy. Yep. Um, you know, I think Coach Furster uh, has had, you know, 
the idea of me starting for a long time. He just didn't have the opportunity yet, and you know he uh, gave me a fair shot to earn the position this this uh, preseason, and you know I, I just ran with it. So I mean I feel like I've been getting better each week. Obviously, the more reps you get during games, the more you've seen, the more you can build off of. So. I truly feel like it's just going to get better from here. Will it get better here, here for you? That's that's the hope, you know. Obviously, there's, there's. I mean, you still got to hit free agency and see what that is. But, um, and I have a kid now, and you know, you stuff. Have a local family now around here. Too, uh, yeah, now, so. yeah. So I mean, it's it's going to be, um, it's going to be a hard decision. But hopefully, we can definitely get something figured out. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it, it 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 caught me off guard a little bit for sure. I mean, it just, I mean, I I mean, I I go into every season hoping to make an impact in the room I'm in, and you know, it's it's definitely, I mean, it's I, I'm I'm just very grateful that the guys around me thought that I was awarding of such an award. Um, I know Lakin won it last year, and Lakin was a baller. Uh, he definitely was, you know, a leader in that room, and and, uh, and 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 just looking at what that award stands for, and the guy, the like the type of guys that are on the wall out there. Those, I mean, it's it's just an honor to be listed with those guys. You were playing as part of the Yeah, I feel like it's 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 definitely a little bit scheme a little bit coaching and also just the type of guys we have you know like we really all showed up to work and regardless on if you know things went right the day prior we we, we really put our uh, you know our our heads to the grindstone and really tried to just figure it out for the collective better you know and 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 and, and, and just we knew the system was good and we we knew coach first had a good uh really just a good scheme for us to be successful in and it just came down to us executing that scheme effectively. A lot of guys said that this was arguably one of the best rosters they've ever been on. What is it that made this group so special? You know obviously there's a lot of talent on this roster but there's also just a lot of good guys and whenever you want to play for someone more than you want to play for yourself usually good things happen from that and and, and I truly think everyone on this team wanted, wanted everyone else to win so badly that they would do anything to make that happen. Thanks. I think that they value me here. I think that they enjoy having me around and I think I can play football at a very high level. So I'm sure everything, not every, everything's on, on the table, I think. Um, you you got to keep a very open mind with this stuff. Um, but you also, have to, you also have to be real about it too because there's a lot of damn good football players in our locker room and a lot of them that need to be paid. And uh, we certainly got one that's going to break the entire bank so um, you got to see how, how the chips fall and um, you know be like I said be real with it but yeah everything's on the table I'm sure I mean I, I that's obviously something that I would not enjoy um, I would like some security um, but that's also that's not my decision whatsoever yeah how do you think this, this year compared with your, your previous four I mean, like, do you feel like this was the best season that you've had I think, yeah, I think so. Um, I think I played really complete football for, for majority of this year. I mean, obviously, mistakes were made here and there, but um, I played great football, and I'm confident in that. I know what my eyes, I know how to, I know what I see with my eyes, and try to, you know, block out what everybody else says. And I know that when you watch the film, there's that I'm a great player, and I, I can continue to play this at a high level, and I can still get a lot better. Um, that's what I'm most looking forward to in this next year. I, th I feel like I'm just getting started. I, you know, got healthy, um, and after missing training camp, and um, started playing as good a football as I've ever played. And um, to be able to build on that for next season um, is exciting to me. And um, it's something that I've, I'm very excited to uh, to have that mindset and with with going into offseason training and be able to actually train instead of rehab for 10 months and. Um, it's, a, it's an exciting time, for sure. Mike, uh, Kyle has gotten criticism because uh, Tyler Croft's blocking Hassan Reddick when Brock Purdy got hurt. I'm going to assume it's not the first time a tight end blocked an uh, edge rusher this year for, for you guys. Mm -hmm. But you just like, for people that look at that and say, 
why would you, you know, ever do that? You know, that's such a mismatch. You just kind of explain the, the thought process behind that. Um, well, there's just a lot of different thought processes behind it. Um, I think it was a, it was a play action game, and that's we, we make a lot of uh, we make a good living in, in, in play action as our, on our team because of how we can run the football. It was a base situation, and uh, the guy took a chance and he, and he rushed the passer instead of playing the base run. And um, you know that's that's, a, that's the way it happens sometimes. We our tight ends are extremely capable of doing these things, and um, I don't even it wasn't even that he got beat all that clean and it's just a, a, a you know a longer developing play that takes some time and it, it's the way it happened but to say that it's a stupid decision is insane to me and it's just something somebody that doesn't really understand how to build a game plan throughout football um, because it's the first or second quarter it's the first quarter for second drive maybe and all your base stuff is still up and on a first and second down to call a play pass it's not anything out of the ordinary and we do it a lot and it's something that um, obviously, you know, there's always great criticisms when the clicker's in somebody's hand and, and, and those things can happen. Um, but, yeah, that was that, there was no second thought about that. That was just a freak thing that happened. You know, Mike, early in your career, the, the criticism had been great run blocker, struggle a bit with pass protection. But over the past two years, uh, I think you've definitely morphed into a very above average pass protector. What's been the... The, the, the key you think in that development of your game? Um, I think one is a mentality. I think it's something that you you, 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 um, you got to train your technique over and over and over again and s identify things that you don't do as well as you thought you did or, or that you needed to improve. Um, and that obviously was an area that you know I needed to improve on. And I think I did that the last you know two years. Um, I've had a lot of success both with uh, as a complete football player. Um, you know, it's just a mentality and it's a, it's a work to fix it. It's a work to techni technically get right. And then, um, you know, once you feel as though you have it right, it's just tr trusting your, trust your swing. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge golfer. Nick and I bond over that very much. And, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a mentality of just swinging your swing. And um, I work harder than anybody to get that stuff right. And why would I not trust it on game day, you know? I, I do a lot of work to get things right and to, to play as good as I can and to play as technically sound as I can. And why wouldn't I just let it rip on Sunday? And t you know, you just got to tee it high and let it fly. And then, um, and that's what I tried to do for the last two years. Is there feelings of like, incompleteness for you guys, where just the way the game the game went on Sunday, where you really didn't have an opportunity by the time the second half comes around when you can't throw the ball at all, where it's like you didn't even get a chance to really compete at, in that game. Yeah, I'm, but at the same time, you can't take any kind of credit away from the Philadelphia Eagles and the team that they are. Um, they were a great group, and we knew we were going to have a tough challenge, you know, the whole day anyway, um, because of how talented and, 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 and hard they play. Um, but yeah, it definitely doesn't feel great to know that you, you essentially just have to run your head through a brick wall for two and a half, two, for two quarters, um, just trying to figure out what to do. Um, I've never been a part of a situation like that. I've never seen that before. I, 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 you know, you come from college where you have 120 guys up on game day, and then all of a sudden there's only 46 in the NFL, and it, I've, emergencies happen. And I was a, my first start in the NFL was that way. Uh, we almost had to have Garrett Selleck play t tackle um, because we went through that many old linemen that were active that day. I've never seen it at the quarterback position. I think it's a little easier to rotate guys in and out, but when you have Kyle Juszczyk getting ready to. Um, take over command and playing quarterback were in a little bit different of a spot. And did, you, did you almost want to see, see that for a second? <laughs> no, <laughs> I did not. Um, I love Juice to death, and I think he's one of the smartest and best football players I've ever been around. Um, but, yeah, when you don't practice playing quarterback, um, it's going to be really hard to do it well. <laughs> Trent, just with 48 hours to kind of reflect on the season, how it ended, hey, where, where's your mind right now? Um, obviously, you know, it sucks to to um, not accomplish everything you want to accomplish. Um, you know, but, I mean, realistically, it's, I think any football team can win a game without a quarterback. So, um, you know, we got dealt a crazy deck of cards on Sunday. I mean, a crazy hand on Sunday. And, um, you know, it sucks. You know, I just think this team worked. Work way too hard, you know, and um, you hate to see it end that way. I know, obviously, the frustration 
at the end of the game? Is that, you know, how do you how do you look on that about just you know the way things were going and, and how the season ended for you personally? I mean, it's just, it happens, stuff happens like that. Um, you know, that was just a very brief time um, during the whole process. I haven't thought much about it since then, honestly. But you know. Um, Whatever we compete, tempers flare, things happen. But never really thought about it since then. Trent, you guys obviously went through multiple quarterbacks this year, had success with pretty much all of them. How do you view the quarterback situation with this team moving forward? Uh, I don't know. That honestly ain't even up to me to view or to make a decision on. You know, Cal and John, we put our trust in them every offseason and they, you know, seem to come through. So that's what we're going to do again. How difficult is it just emotionally to get so close to the goal, to getting to the Super Bowl, to winning the Super Bowl the last couple of years and just come up just short? Yeah, it, it sucks. Like you said, you put, it, put a lot into this. Um, you can't, you can't have time fo- football or playing football. So, you know, a lot of us um, dedicate our whole life to this. So, you know, with the, with the objective being to win a Super Bowl uh, once, twice, multiple times. So, Anytime you don't accomplish that, you know, it's always disappointing. Well, what's something you maybe you learned about this team this year, the 12-game winning streak? You didn't lose for more than three months, and then uh, how you guys battle back through different quarterback situations. What would you learn about this team? Um, I think, I wouldn't say learn, but I think it, it confirmed that, you know, um, the talent that we have on the roster from top to bottom, the, um, the way that this team comes out, and compete the brand of ball that we play. We know that it's conducive to winning, and um, you know we know that we're a resilient bunch. And that we uh, we've been through a lot, and uh, no different than any, any other team. Um, but we, you know, we rolled with the punches and we did what we could do. And, and like you said, we ripped off 12 games in a row, which is hard to do in um, in this league. So you know, I'm super proud of this team about you know the season that we had. Unfortunately, you know, we couldn't finish it the way we wanted to, but uh, when you look at it in this totality, we don't have anything to hold our head about. Your team will be a different next year, obviously, because it, op- it usually is. Um, some of the guys afterwards were, ta- were referencing guys like Joe Staley and, and, you know, and him retiring afterwards. You're still at the top of your game, but you are at an age where sometimes guys think about that. You're, you're not thinking about retiring, are you? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a long season, you know, and having two long seasons back to back, you know, it does get uh, it does get pretty grueling for a 34 year old guy like myself, knowing I'll be 35 when the season start. You know, um, you do kind of think about what's life look like after football. Um, you know, because I've I've done this every year of my life since the second grade. You know, so. Um, you know, you do get to that age where, you know, especially after ending a year like this and it being as exhausting as it was and, you know, still not getting quite where you want to be, um, you know, I, I get it. You know, you get to that age. But honestly, I'm just taking it one day at a time and, you know, we'll see how that goes going forward. Do you have a feeling like how much longer you can play at <laughs> this high of a level? I don't. I don't. Um... I think, to me, I think it's all about uh, what I what I can do during the off season. Um, you know, sticking to my regimen, sticking to my to the blueprint, and trying to you know study myself, figure out ways to 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 get better, um, figure out anything that I can see on film or anything. Uh, that's pretty much what I use this time for. But um, you know, I'm really I'm just taking it one day at a time. I really ain't. It ain't a lot of future to look forward to, so you know I might as well live in the present, right? So yeah. I'm just really just taking it one day at a time. Trent, I, I sense you wanted another question about this boot and crutches, um, but <laughs> <laughs> obviously that's not something that would linger into training camp. No, okay. no, it probably won't even linger for the next 48 hours. I, I should oh. be good. Like it's literally, it's very minor. Got yeah. it. Trent mcglinchey has been your bookend since the time you got here. How have you seen him grow, and how much would you like to, you know, see him come back, or even just, you know, get what what he's got coming to him free? Yeah, I mean, selfishly, I would definitely want to see him come back. Um, but you know, as a friend, as a, um, you know, older brother or older mentor to Mike, um, 
older teammate, whatever you want to call it. Um, I definitely want to see him get what he deserves. So, you know, I understand the business if if what he deserves um, outprices him himself for, for this locker room, then you know it sucks. But he deserves it, you know. And and um, you know we this is a violent game, and you know it's a double-edged sword to take a discount just to be somewhere where you want where you like it. Um, so, you know, honestly, to answer your question about how he's developed, I think he's done a tremendous job. I think he's, um, you know, from, from the time I stepped in his locker room to now, um, I think it's night and day what kind of player he's, he's developed into and what type of player he's become. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him that, you know, you get to this point in your career where you can be a free agent and, you, and you're able to see your value and see what, you know, what your work translate into on the open market. And, you know, I'm happy for him to enjoy this process. But to answer your question, yeah, I would love to see him come back in his locker room. I hope we can do whatever we can to keep him. And uh, But if we can't, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him. I love him. I, I want to see the best for him. As reporters, we had not seen Kyle that kind of openly emotional after a, a loss. It, was that the same experience for you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's pretty. It's easy to accept a loss when um, you know you go out there, you do the best you can, and it just falls short. You know, and and the better team wins that day. Um, but you know, when you don't feel like you ever got got a chance to you know get past the start line, you know, uh, under fair circum under fair circumstances, that, that that one was just a little little harder to accept, just because you know we put so much into it. You worked so hard to get here. You actually want to see. You know that work play out. You know on Sunday, and, and you know being an unfortunate situation we was put in, um, we weren't able to do that. So I think that's that's the part that hurts the most. Take two more, guys. Well, you mentioned you've been playing football since age seven. No, I said since second grade. How okay, goes, seven how or eight years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like twenty five years. Is it, yeah. is it is it getting harder and harder to get up and get that same excitement level as you <laughs> over these? Last quarter of a century? Yeah, honestly, I'd be lying if I said it didn't. Yeah, it does. I mean, it doesn't, it isn't hard to get up for an NFC championship or, you know, a playoffs or anything like that. But yeah, the day to day grind, I mean, it, it does get, you know, pretty redundant doing it for a long time. But, you know, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be able to play this game for as long as I have. And, you know, and whatever God has in the future for me, you know, I, I know I'll, I'll, I'll have it. But, you know, um, to answer your question, yeah, it does get a little, get you know, it's like a like a rerun almost. You know. Yeah. Trent, I mean, Colton McKivitz stepped in for you late last season for a game. If he's called on to be a starter, um, what could we expect? What can uh, the team expect from him as a starter if, if he's put in that role? Yeah, I think um, from the the reason that he was um, in that position to be put in the starter game for anybody. It's just a um, symbolizes how hard he's worked and to get to this position. Um, you know, it wasn't like he was a first, second round draft pick or anybody. He he wasn't designated a roster spot. You know, he worked he worked his butt off. And I think um, he put in the type of work and he made the type of, of leaps and bounds that that everybody recognizes, not just your your uh, offensive line uh, mates or your you know your offensive line coach. But I think everybody. Um, seeing the jump that he's made, seeing how um, how good of a player he is and, and how good of a player he will be. Um, so, you know, we have full faith in Colton, you know, may that be the case. And and, and Jalen as well, you know, both of those guys got a, got a very high ceiling. And, um, you know, the more ball they play, the better they're going to become, especially with experience. Oh, I'm doing great, man. You know, we just walked around, ready to go party. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Howdy. Uh, Three mics? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's come on. pretty aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't share one mic? You would think, No, right? okay. You yeah, know, I feel you. George, 48 <laughs> hours after the season. Yeah. How have you processed what happened, not only Sunday, but just the whole year? Oh, sorry. Um, whole year, just very appreciative. Um, stringing, stringing along 12 wins, especially after starting the way we started. Uh, was awesome. Um, great memories getting a guy like Chris McCaffrey halfway through the season to see the way he affected our offense, the way he kind of changed some stuff, and 
uh, helped our team was awesome. Um, seeing a team to go through three plus quarterbacks and respond and still play at a high level, awesome. Uh, I know fantastic people in this building showed up every single day trying to work at their highest level. That's inspiring. It's really fun to be a part of something like that. Um, last two days, I, don't know, I always say losing sucks. It is what it is. Um, only so much you can do. Not a lot you could control um, to that, you know, in that game. But uh, you just have to deal with it and try to figure out a way to get the ball to bounce in your favor next time. So are you yeah. saying that the frustration is a little different this year it's because the circumstances Sunday where you didn't really feel you had a chance the way things played out? Is that, is that sort of how you feel? Just Is it different? How does it compare to you've obviously been in? Yeah, I mean, I mean I've been in games where, like, you get blown out. Um, not very many, luckily, in my career, but I've had a couple of those where you're like, okay, you know, there's no, we're not trying anymore. Um, been in the tight games where you could be on a last-second field goal or, you know, turn the ball over late in the game, something like that. Yeah, the, uh, it was definitely not the greatest situation to be in on Sunday, um, not being able to throw a football. So it's like only so much you can do in the past game as a receiver. Uh, but, yeah, it, was, it just wasn't the greatest feeling. You know, I saw had faith in us. You know, we converted a third and 12, and... Uh, you know, even though we're down 14, it's just kind of like, all right, you know, we can still make this interesting. Like, it's definitely not over. And then when you lose your four-string quarterback and your backup who can't throw a football, it comes in. It's just kind of like, all right, well, it's going to take a miracle, but, you know, it's still possible. And then, I mean, their offense was a really good offense. They kept scoring. So it's just, it is what it is. That's football. Disappointed, but it is. Do you know, was there any talk of, you know, maybe having Christian McCaffrey come in in the Wildcat or... Uh, Kyle Juszczyk come in, the emergency quarterback, instead of bringing Purdy back in? Is that, was that discussed at all? Um, I wasn't a part of those discussions. There might have been. I don't know. You'd have to ask those guys. Um, Would you have liked to have seen uh, Oh, I mean, like who knows? I mean, yeah, throw Juwan in there, see what he can do. He was, you know, a top 10 high school quarterback. But, like, I mean, at the end of the day, it's the NFC Championship game. You're down, you know, 28 points. There's only so much you can do and expect out of guys. But, yeah, could we have done – ABC differently, sure. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's a great question for Kyle, I guess. Is, is there an emotional toll of getting so close three out of the last four years to winning a Super Bowl and just coming up short? It's a fantastic question. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, I mean, it's football. You put yourself out there every single day, um, every single Sunday, for all the work you do the entire offseason. You know, all, you'll start training in March. You go through all the OTAs, new teammates, building bonds, working hard, going through, you know, injuries, practice, just kind of building yourself up. And then you put yourself out there every single Sunday to be judged by millions of people, uh, whether it's coaches tape copy, I'm getting tagged in on Twitter, uh, people on ESPN talking about stuff, um, people coming at your team, certain players on the team, you know, every single day, that's kind of how it is. You know, and the, you know, nice things written about us too, but um, a lot of negative portrayal. And when you put yourself out there all the time, it does, it drains you on a little bit, but when you're in a locker room full of guys like this, you know, organization like this, guys that build you up and to keep you positive and you, you know, keep grinding every single day, that's how you string together 12 wins. And um, there's definitely not a happiness. There's a lot of great memories. Yeah, sure. I mean, losing again, that's yeah, terrible. Uh, it's not fun, but I mean, I ain't dead yet, and I'll be right here next year, ready to roll. Jordan, you've had quarterback questions, this team's had quarterback questions each of the last few off seasons. Probably yeah, will really? Again, probably will again. Probably will again. This I can't wait to talk about that. I'm sure. <laughs> we'll start right now. What, yeah, bring what's it, man. What's, what do you think about Brady? What's your, what's, your, what's your confidence level in, in, in the guys that you have coming back based on what you've seen? Well, first off, I've had a six-year career. I've had one year with one quarterback. Super fun. 2019. Other than that, I've had two or more. Four out of six, I've had three or more. It's awesome. Uh, it's an experience. I just love a plethora of quarterbacks <laughs> to choose from. Um, what's my confidence level? I mean, I don't know how you can't be, uh, you know, confident in Brock Purdy, what he put together. Um, I don't really foresee us losing too many of our, like, our skill positions, you know, going into next year. Obviously, like, there's contracts and stuff, at, you know, after next season. But, you know, next year, I think we have an ability, like, we have, an, um, we have a possibility to go out there and compete at a really high, high level from right away, you know, not take a slow start. You know, that's my goal. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know, like Trey, hopefully he's thrown again here soon and, you know, it'll be a nice competitive battle for him. You know I mean, uh, I have no idea what the guy behind me is going to do. I had no idea what he's going to do last year or the year before that too. And hey, you never know what happens. Um, but you know, every, I know that John and Kyle are going to bring capable people in this building to compete and give us our best shot of winning. So they've done a pretty good job of, you know, getting us to win, um, you know, bring guys in here who want to win and uh, giving us a shot at winning. So 
uh, whoever they bring in, whatever you know the choices are, whoever we're competing with, like you know at those positions, it'll be a good competition, and I'm excited to be a part of it. So some stability would be your number one request. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's um, not really known every off season. Like it is what it is. Like again, like I'm gonna show up, but like yeah, being able to build some rapport with someone consistently would be very fun. And you know, that's not Jimmy's fault. That's not Trey's fault. That's not Brock's. I mean, like. It's just a situation we're in, and uh, for some reason, I, our quarterback position gets hurt sometimes, and it's, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is, and you just got to deal with it, and we've been dealing with it for a while, so you know, hopefully uh, we can eliminate that bug and uh, just play quarterback. Do you, do you end this season physically feeling better than you have maybe in the last few years? This is actually the best I've felt since 2019 season, so I'm pretty happy about that. I don't have to like go do a whole bunch of rehab stuff for the next three months to try to play again, so no, I feel fantastic. Ended on a high note. Um, yeah, being healthy and being able to just to go, you know, leave the building and walk out to my car like I'm fully capable of doing whatever I want. It's pretty fun. George, Kyle's been criticized because Tyler Croft, like Hassan Reddick on the play, Purdy mm -hmm. was injured. Can you explain as a tight end, like the thought process behind that and why that is not a terribly unusual thing? Um, well, I mean, first off, like I believe if Coach Shannon calls something, like I like. I'm going to do it the best of my ability, and I believe that the guys around me can do it. I think I have a good tight end room. Uh, you know, whoever it is is talented enough to make that block. Uh, Reddick is a fantastic pass rusher. You know, he's second in the league in sacks, I think. Fantastic. Um, could you put off the on? Sure. Um, but like, I believe that Croft can make that block for the timing that you need to make the block for. Uh, it didn't happen. That's football. I mean, they've got good guys. We've got good guys. Um, I know, like, I think I've seen some flag, like, why would you ever put a tight end on him? I'm pretty sure I had two pass pros against him where I shut him down. And again, like, you pay me a lot more money than you pay the next guy. And that's why the reason you pay me. But I still believe in, like, my teammates to be able to make those blocks. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate. But um, and everyone's going to come at Kyle's head for that. Why are you leaving a tight end on a defensive end? People do it. It's just on that play, it didn't work very well. It also seems that Reddick was dead set on the pass, didn't, didn't look for, for the run fake at all. Was that just the Eagles gambling? Hard on that I think that a lot of their game plan was we're just going to spread out field and not care about any of the stuff like the motions and stuff you have going on in the background. I mean, they have the D line capable to do that with a guy kind of not going rogue, but hey, you see the tackle go away from you, split the gap and just see how fast you can get to the quarterback because of all the play action stuff that we do. I think it's a good game plan by them. Um, we could have done a couple things different to probably try to eliminate that, but you know, early on, when we had a quarterback that was capable of throwing the football, um, I think they were just saying, screw it, and we're going to let you guys run the ball, but we're not going to let you get any of your explosive passes. Brock could, could miss tomorrow. all of the, uh, the, uh, the spring practices, all of OTAs. I know. Which it's is awesome. Usually a, uh, a concern for a, uh, a young quarterback. Is it less of a concern for, for him, just given what he showed you guys this, this, this season? I mean, I think Brock's proven nothing more that he's a gamer. He knows how to play quarterback. Um, he's a guy that's going to get better with reps. So would I prefer Brock to have it a full off season? Sure, I would love for him to have that full off season to throw the ball, getting you know more rhythm with all the guys. Did he do a fantastic job with no reps stepping in and playing at an incredibly high level for nine weeks? Fantastic. You, I mean, I don't know what he could have done differently to play at a better level. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'd like that not to be the case for him to be hurt right now. Is it going to be you know do or die? No, I know that whenever he is allowed to throw and allowed to par participate, he's going to do everything he can to be at a very high level for us. He's focused. He's a great rookie. He doesn't act like a rookie. I think he no understands like the pressure that we're all on under uh, you know every day to try to win. How good you have to be every single day. He's aware of that. So I'm not worried that he's going to like take the offseason off and say, oh wow, I won in eight games in a row and I'm really good at football. Like it's not going to be that hard. It's going to be harder next year because guys aren't going to let Brock Purdy be Brock Purdy probably. Back-to-back -back NFC championships, three out of the last four years. What's it going to take to get over the hump? That's very similar to the question you asked me like five minutes ago. <laughs> um, you know, ball needs to bounce away a little bit better, continue to play at a high level, continue to practice at a high level. We have fantastic guys in this locker room. We have a very talented roster, great roster depth. Get the ball to the guys and make plays and stay as healthy as we possibly can be.